Hi guys, this is TabletNews.com and I bet that you know what this tablet is. It's the Asus Nexus 7, also known as the Google Nexus 7. It's the tablet jointly developed by Google and Asus, a 7-inch model, the first device to run Android 4.1 Jelly Bean and quite a bundle of joy if you ask me. This tablet was made famous by the fact that it's very, very affordable, so the 8GB version of it costs $199 while the 16GB version goes for $249. It was unveiled at Google I.O. at the end of June and it comes with Jelly Bean, as I said, has a 7-inch display and it was launched with this operating system. Okay, so now let's get the design. As you can see, we have a pretty big bezel at the bottom. Below the display, we have these three capacitive buttons available right here. The, in fact, there are three virtual buttons, so there aren't actually capacitive. At the bottom we have the micro USB port, audio jack, and here we have the volume buttons and on-off button on this side. So they kept everything to the minimum. Those are the single ports that we have, and these are all the buttons that we have. Here you can see the Nexus logo, a SUS logo, and a pretty wide, big, and powerful speaker. The surface at the back is rubbery, it has a very nice texture and feels very nice to the user's hand. You should get used to it since you'll be spending a lot of time with this tablet in your hand, either in a single hand, like this, or two hands, or maybe one hand and a half, so to say. Okay, up front we've got this uh, front camera, right here. This is a 1.2 megapixel camera that we've got on this device. It does 720p capture, but it's made rather for video calls than taking shots which I bet you wouldn't do with a front camera. So what can I say, this device, this tablet, this 7 inch Nexus 7 feels like a very good companion when you hold it in your hand like this and you put it next to you in bed while reading or watching a movie, it feels like a very nice idea. It measures 10.5 millimeters in thickness, so it's not actually the thinnest device out there. Also it weighs 340 grams, so it's light, I give you that much. It's pretty light. Now moving on to the hardware section. Well, inside the ticker of this device is a quad-core Tegra 3 1.3 um, GHz processor accompanied by 1 GB of RAM and 8 or 16 GB of storage. You don't get a microSD card slot on this model, remember that. The display, well, this is a 7-inch IPS screen with a resolution of 1280 over 800 pixels. The, um, um, the, the display has a 216 ppi, that's the pixel density, and if you compare that to the iPad 3, the one with the Retina display, well, that one has a 264 ppi, so this model is uh, a bit inferior, obviously, but it's still a very good display with this IPS panel that it has on board. Obviously, we have uh, Wi-Fi on board, Bluetooth, GPS, NFC, accelerometer, gyroscope, and... Uh, the usual specifications that include protection for the screen, corning glass and this is a micro USB 2.0 port in case you want specifics. The camera at the front as I said does 720p capture for video calls and stuff like that. Inside we also have um, ULP GeForce GPU that will take care of your gaming needs. The battery inside is a 4325 mAh, good enough for about let's say 9-10 hours functioning for the device. I was particularly impressed that I managed to use the tablet pretty much for two days. One day I watched movies for about 3-4 hours, the other day I played two hours of Angry Birds, browsed the web, surfed the web and the tablet lasted that long. So I'm pretty impressed by it. The only problem I have with this device is that it takes quite a long while to charge. So it took me about four hours to bring it from 0% in the battery area to 100%, so 4 hours is a bit much, but considering the battery offers 300 hours of standby, it's actually a reasonable thing to get. As you probably know already, this device runs Android 4.1 Jelly Bean, and what this means is that you get this cool notification area with expanded notification. Up until now, a, tab a tablet only had a um, small area around here, or if you kept it in landscape around this area of the screen was that big notification area or it could get that big. Now it's pretty important as you can see also the notifications have expanded when you get an email you don't only see the subject or the sender 
you also see a portion of the email so the notification area has expanded as you can see the main home screens will not turn to landscape they're available only in portrait mode but luckily the applications will turn to landscape with is so no problem about that this is how you switch between music albums uh, but once again if you have problems with this orientation with the portrait mode of the home screens you can always get an auto rotate app from google play store there are a bunch of such apps so your problem will be solved getting back to jelly bean aside from the cool notification area that has been expanded another thing that this os offered is the very very good speed it can reach 60 frames per second in the interface department and behind this there's project butter what project butter does is uh, make the graphic side and the cpu run in parallel and provide triple buffering for the interface so it gets a very very good uh, speed and smoothness of the interface another thing to notice is the google now that you can access from the lock screen like i just did or you can access it by swiping up google now is a virtual assistant so you simply tell it to search for stuff you can call its name and it will activate so let me try it google let's see if it senses it google well i guess i have to press this search length of golden gate bridge length of golden gate bridge golden gate bridge has a length of 2737.00 meters as you can see it's based on information from wikipedia uh, while uh, its rival from apple series based on information from wolfram alpha and i find google now to be pretty pleasing it answers the queries pretty nicely and it has a nice card system those are the cards Cards mean that there are uh, preset information, so to say, you don't preset them, they preset them by themselves, like uh, the fact that it always shows me the weather when I access it. So as you can see, I didn't ask for the weather, but it remembered where I was and that I often asked what was the weather like. For example, if you keep asking about a soccer team or a football team, you keep asking about its score, it will remember that and display the score without you asking for it. So it can preset your preferences to show them in those cards. Once again, I'm very impressed by the idea of the Project Butter. Very smooth UI, very fast functioning, great number of frames per second. And also, when Jelly Bean was launched, you also got, got new versions of the classic Android apps. You can see them right here. We got Gmail, Maps, Earth, also Google Currents, we got a calendar. A major app, a major update happened for YouTube, as you can see. It's organized in a way that reminds me of TV channels. You see this area right here. This is the main interface of the app. Other updates that happen, well, Google Plus also got a major revamp. It's based on sort of a tiles interface. That's the timeline. And the main interface you can see right here reminds me of the Facebook app. So Google Plus watch change as well, not only YouTube. Let's see what else has been changed. Oh, once again, you probably noticed we have Chrome as the default browser on this thing. So let's enter Tablet News and check it out. Here we are, tabletnews.com, loaded very fast, obviously works in both portrait and landscape. This is the virtual keyboard, pretty comfy to use. Scrolling around, pinch to zoom, the obvious options here like incognito tab, bookmarks, other devices you can also sync stuff from other devices and from the desktop Chrome so it's nice to have Chrome here for a change I was very surprised that Google Earth came with this tablet I haven't seen Google Earth pre-installed on many devices but more about that a bit later Google Maps was also updated you can see that even from its logo the logo also changed so this is what Google Maps looks like right now turning it in landscape we can see satellite view as well it got a speed bump and the performance bump more features and it should work better right now okay as i said uh, later on i will show you the google earth app in the meantime let's continue with the review and you already saw the chrome browser on this device and you see that we have an area at the bottom a sort of dock that keeps the main google apps we have chrome we have google plus 
YouTube, the music player, we've got a Play Store available right here. So everything is easy to access when keeping the tablet in portrait mode. Also I forgot to show you something as far as the design goes. There are these, these uh, four metallic pins here leading me to believe that in the future there will be a dock and more accessories for this beautiful little tablet. Okay guys, it's time for that moment of the review when we check out the audio and video quality. So, let's listen to a song or two. And I'm very pleased with the audio quality of the tablet. The speaker. And now let's try a bit of rock. This is the guitarist of uh, the former guitarist of Reho Chili Peppers. You probably recognize the guitar. So pretty good volume, very good bass. The audio playback is flawless on this tablet. Uh, now I'm going to have to show you some video playback. I'm going to show you a full HD trailer of an upcoming DreamWorks animation. It will be pretty cool. I've chosen this not only because it's full HD, it's very colorful. It has a lot of actions, a lot of color. Okay guys, so you saw the video playback, it's pretty cool, the IPS 7 inch display is doing a great job and aside from the fact that it's easy to get smudges on it, to get fingerprints and other traces and that it reflects light a bit too much, I'm very happy with this display. So ignoring the reflections and the smudges, I can say that the video quality is very okay and that the display does its job. You probably read online that some people have found problems with their displays like ghosting effect or they kept pressing the edge and it would move well I didn't have that problem at least not yet with this device okay moving on it's the technical part of the review that involves benchmarks which I saved in a separate area of screenshots and here we are first of all we have quadrant in quadrant we scored as you can see 3656 we compare that to the Asus Transformer Infinity Pad that's called 4600 while the Transformer Pad 300 scored 3700, so we should be around the level of the cheaper Transformer Pad, the 300, while the Prime and Infinity score over 4000. Of course, the Asus platform scores 5000, so that one is uh, out of this league. Moving on, we've got the platform, we got the, excuse me, Antutu score. In Antutu, we scored 10,950. We compare that to the Asus Transformer Infinity Pad 11,000 to the 9000 of the Asus Transformer Pad 300 and the 10000 of the Prime. So we're in the same range of other quad-core tablets made by Asus. In Nenamark we scored 55 frames per second, but this is a 7-inch tablet so it's easy to get big scores on a decent resolution and small diagonal. For example, the Asus Transformer Infinity Pad has a full HD screen and it got 34 frames per second, so not that relevant. Moving on, in Velamo we scored 1733 we surpassed the infinity pad that had 1400 the transformer pad 300 the prime but the platform surpassed us by 700 points 
and finally this is the browser mark score we scored 123,424 points we compare that to the iPad 3 that scored around 100,000 points so this one scores more than the iPad 3 but we scored less, less than the Galaxy Note 10.1 that scored 1 the 160,000 points pretty easy pretty hard to pronounce these numbers okay so we're done with the benchmark hope I didn't bore you I promise to show you Google Earth that's exactly what I'm going to do but before that I'm going to show you an app you probably know it already it's called Google Currents it replaces the reader if you ask me it's a pretty nice way to find out what your favorite sites are writing so if you should follow technology well to me it's sort of a flipboard replacement if you want so you keep tabs of what you want to read so if you want to read Android Center or Gizmodo it's pretty easy to keep up with what they're writing you can also add your favorite blogs, posts or whatever source of info you want so once again Google Currents is sort of a flipboard but not as complex and finally we've got Google Earth this is version 7.0 of Google Earth with 3D imagery and a tour guide option so for example if you're in Rome you can view beautiful stuff like local monuments the Vatican, various buildings, let's turn this to landscape and I'm pretty impressed by the graphics those graphics are made available especially when you have a well performing device, a dual core or quad core device so having Google Earth is truly nice you can actually explore the city of Rome like I'm doing now and see everything in great detail now I'm approaching the Vatican here's the Vatican so it's very cool once again Google Earth 7.0 with 3D imagery very very nice okay so that you want to call someone well you'll go to the list of contacts in the people area here we are when I say call of course I mean voice over IP and doing some video calls and other stuff like that it's pretty easy you press that person and uh, it will work immediately and you can start a hangout on Google Plus or do whatever you want simply by using the contacts area okay guys we're at the end of the review time to give this device its marks and see how much it scored in our test at tabletnews.com first of all in the design area it's very comfortable to hold it has this metallic ring for extra strength rubbery back great display so it gets a 9 out of 10 for design as far as operating system goes I really felt the revolution of Android 4.1 Jelly Bean it gets a 9.5 out of 10 for the hardware the quad core CPU 1 GB of RAM and everything 9.5 out of 10 of course the price is also a big factor so $200 for this baby is excellent the final mark is 9.4 out of 10 it's a solid buy it's a must have I consider this to be the companion tablet so if you own a smartphone you must buy this is the new wave of devices from Google and Asus so once again 9.4 out of 10 from tabletnews.com hope you like our review keep following us on our website and we'll be back soon with more news, info and reviews to show you and more interesting tablets. This is tabletnews.com and this is the Nexus 7. Hope you like the review. Bye bye.